Hello everybody, welcome to Cyber Sanctuary Bible Study. I'm Elder Fulmer Collins and I'll be with you today and we're going to get into the Word. Before that, we're so happy that you were able to join us uh, to spend this time in the Word. Uh, so let us first look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Father, we thank you that you have allowed us to come here at this moment, uh, at this time, in order to uh, study your Word. Father, in this year of extraordinary faith, Father, we want to get into your word to really begin to look at extraordinary faith and what it's going to take for us to get to where we need to be. So, Father, we just thank you. We ask you to bless this time together that we will get out of your word what you have for us this day. Now, dear God, we just pray for all of those who are under the sound of my voice at any moment they are watching this teaching. That, Father, that you will bless them where they have need. Bless them in their need for extraordinary faith as we look at your word. Dear God, we thank you, we love you, we honor, and we adore you. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. We say amen and amen. Again, welcome to Cyber Sanctuary Bible Study, and I'm Elder Fulmer Collins, and I'm here uh, to get into the word with you today. And so we're going to uh, study a portion of scripture today, and we, if you've ever watched one of the hoarder shows, uh, we've got people who uh, can't let go of things and they're being consumed by the stuff that's around them. And we, we, I've watched these shows with my family and we see that the things that they have uh, accumulated are just consuming them. They're overwhelming them in the place where they live. They oftentimes uh, only have a small path to get around their house. And then even in some rooms, they can't even get into those rooms because the stuff that they can't get rid of, they can't let go, have just overtaken them. And we just sit and uh, wonder why they can't take, get rid of the stuff that uh, they've ac accumulated. As they get more stuff, they don't get rid of anything else. And if you listen to the uh, psychologists or people who are there to help them, to get them to understand that this is not healthy, oftentimes you see that these people have connected their stuff with actually their survival. They believe they can't get along without their stuff. And even it's easy to see how that has has gotten to the place where it is no longer about these things helping them to survive. But when we take a look back at uh, other things where it has not gotten out of hand, if we just take a look at ourselves, we have an issue with getting of letting things go, getting rid of things, things that we think are connected to our very survival, our very being. And so. I started to, to think about that, uh, this whole letting go uh, and the connection with a survival. And then I started to think about the times where I've got just a few dollars in my, my, my wallet and I walk past a, a person and they say, do you have any money to spare? And I'm thinking, I just only have a few dollars at the time and I don't want to let go of just those few dollars at the time. And it's not as if there's not access to other money. But at that moment, that's all that I have. Or you're out with your significant other, or you might even be out on a date and you've got one of your favorite pieces of your plate left. And the person across the table asks, uh, you wanna eat that? And you don't want to let the last go. Uh, you want to keep the last for yourself. And even, if there's the last piece of my favorite Mrs. Bush cake and my daughter will ask me, um, you gonna eat that? And I just don't want to let that last piece of cake go. And really the Lord began to speak to me on these examples on how we attach ourselves to some things that we think we can't let go. And so he took me to uh, this scripture familiar scripture, even scripture that I've taught on before, but not from this standpoint. So we just want to uh, get into your word. So if uh, you have your Bibles, uh, we just want to turn to the 17th chapter of First Kings. And this is a very familiar story, uh, Elijah the prophet, uh, who uh, the Lord sent to uh, 
the brook, a dry place uh, where there's a brook flowing and he commanded the ravens to feed him uh, morning and evening and he was there and at a certain time, the scripture says, the, book, the brook dried up. So let's just uh, take a look at this, starting at the seventh chapter, uh, the seventh verse of the 17th chapter, I'm sorry. It says this, uh, and I'm reading out of the New International Version, it says, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him, being Elijah, go at once to Zarephath in a region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called and says, and bring me a piece of bread. As surely, and this is the widow replying, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I do not have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we might eat and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go home, do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. In verse 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. So she went and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Yes, this first part of the story of Elijah and the widow from Zarephath the background for this is, as you know, Elijah was, uh, went to the brook and was fed by the ravens and drank from the brook. And when the brook dried up, the word of the Lord came to him and told him to go to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath was not in Israel. And in fact, it was a part of the kingdom of Tyre. And it was closer to those who worshipped the pagan god Baal. So it was interesting that God sent him there and in the midst of the brook drying up and not having water Elijah found himself in a season of lack, a, season, a dry place and the Lord sends him to Zarephath and normally when you are in a dry place and looking for someone to help you you're looking for someone who has more than you have and it would be odd that the Lord would send Elijah to a widow. And in these times, widows were very meager because they didn't have anyone to support them, to, to, to provide for them. And as we see in the scripture, she was even in a more hopeless state uh, from the famine and the, from the drought than Elijah was. And so we often will find that we are looking for a blessing from someone we uh, think can has more than we do and can bless us out of their excess but in this story Elijah finds his blessing in a person who is also in need the widow tells him that she is only has a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil and she's gathering some sticks so she can make a fire to make bread and then eat and die. And so it is amazing that the Lord would use this widow in order to provide food for Elijah. Now, if we go back to him being uh, there with the ravens and the brook, 
Ravens are not normally an animal that would share their food. Actually, they're ones who take food away from uh, other animals uh, or they're dealing with uh, roadkill, if you will. And so not only did God show himself in providing for Elijah with the ravens bringing meat day and night and drinking from the brook, when he left to go to Zarephath, he used the widow to provide for his needs. Now let's turn our attention uh, quickly to the widow. Now the widow was in a place where there was a drought in the land. She was at her last, she was hopeless. She only had a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And she had made a plan that this is it. It's all over. I'm gonna make this last meal. We're gonna eat and then we will just die. And so she, having her plan to use this little bit, what little bit she had left to use it in her last, Elijah comes and asks for water. And she was going to get the water, but when he asked her for some bread, I know in her mind she is saying, I just have a little bit left and I'm planning to cook it, eat, and my son and myself, we're just going to die because we have nothing else. And here, the man of God is asking me for some of the little bit that I have left. Now, her response could have been, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. Uh, and I can't make you a piece of bread because all I have is enough for me and my son. And we're going to go do my plan and that's going to be it. But in this season of extraordinary faith, when she was told by Elijah to go ahead and make me first a loaf of bread and then make something for you and your family, he is actually asking her to take the little bit she, that she had and give him some first, not what was left after she finished, but to make him a loaf of bread first. And in her faith of listening to the man of God, Elijah, her faith by making him and following the word of the Lord was blessed with enough for her to feed her Elijah, herself and her family until the Lord sent rain. How many of us holding on to the little bit and what we feel is the last that we have that we're not willing to use it to follow the word of the Lord because the scripture tells tells us that the Lord commanded the widow to feed Elijah even before Elijah had gone to Zarephath he was still there at the at the brook and he the Lord told Elijah that I have commanded a widow to supply your needs and so this widow was going to supply his need before supplying her need, but out of that obedience, out of that faith, she was blessed to be able to spend the rest of this drought with enough flour and oil to make bread every day. Now, to be transparent, there are times when we might be on the last of something and we'll tuck it away and save it for another time. But this woman was really at her last. It was actual uh, a, a season, the end of her season of lack. And so she was able to follow and, and be honest with herself and be faithful to the word, believing the word of the Lord that Elijah spoke to her, that if she gave a portion of the little bit she had, she would still be okay. So I, it, it is amazing to me that in the times where I've been in a season of lack, that the little bit I had left, the Lord would ask, share that which you have. And if we look at what we have as the, the source, we say, well, I don't have enough to share. But if we just look at, look at it as the resource, I have this, 
But if I use it to be obedient, then the Lord will provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So if I focus in on the little bit of flour and the little bit of oil, as opposed to focusing on he who supplies the flour, the flour and the oil, I will not be able to be obedient because I don't believe that it's going to happen because this is all I have. I have enough for two loaves of bread and that's all. But when we realize that what we have is only the resource. It is not the source. So if the source is able to replenish the resource, then we can treat that resource and be obedient. So if, we, if the Lord has given you a vision and you don't believe that you have enough to accomplish that vision, he commanded the widow to supply Elijah's food. And so not looking at what she had, but looking at the person and uh, looking at the, the one who said to do it. If he gives you an assignment, he will provide you what you need to carry out that assignment. He would not have told her to feed Elijah if all she really had was a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And so it is much like in scripture when uh, the the widow had debt to pay and could not pay it. And the prophet told her to go gather jars and then begin to pour oil and then sell the oil. Well, if we only want to, if we can only focus on what we have and what we see in our hands, we will miss the blessing that is coming because if we hold on to it, what she could have done is made the, the bread from what she had her son would have eaten, she would have eaten, and then she would have died. But because she was obedient, because she let go of the little she had in order to be obedient to what God has said, he then blessed her with more and more and more and more. And every day, I believe, as she baked bread out of the flour and the oil, she said was only a little. Every loaf of bread that went into the oven was a reminder of her faith, of her extraordinary faith that the little bit of oil and the little bit of flour that she had is still providing for her need. Now, the scripture doesn't tell it, and I don't believe that it, uh, it actually happened. That no one came and delivered more flour because of her obedience. God miraculously took that little bit of flour and it renewed itself every day, every day. Every time she made it, it reminded her of the faith that the one act of faith, extraordinary faith that she did by making Elijah a loaf of bread before she made, carried out her plan. Her plan, she had in her head, she was out gathering sticks, but when the Lord sent word through Elijah, she changed her plan. She said, no, I will follow what the, the word of the Lord says and I will make him first. And because of that obedience, because of that extraordinary faith, she was able to be blessed all the way through the famine in the land. So as we gain from this story, what is it that we are might be holding on to that the Lord wants us to release so that he could then bless us beyond our measure. I know when she was asked for the bread, she wasn't thinking that the flour was necessarily going to, and the oil was gonna last until she no longer had need, until the rain came. But because she was able to be obedient to the word, she was blessed. What is it that we are holding on to that we need to let go in this time of extraordinary faith. It would take extraordinary faith for us to give away our last. What we believe is standing between us and death, the survival, our mere existence. If we can say that I'm willing to give that up to be obedient to the word, be obedient to the word given by the prophet, given by the Lord, then I can be blessed. What is it that you might be holding on to the Lord wants you to release in this time of faith that knowing that if I if I follow the word of the Lord, he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. What is it 
that's holding you from being obedient to God. It may not be flour, it may not be oil, but there's something that you may be called to do. You may be commanded to do by the Lord, but you don't think you have enough to carry it out. But if you commit what you do have and follow what the Lord has commanded you to do, he will supply all that you need in order to carry out your assignment. So what is your assignment today? The Lord wants you to use the resources that you have in order to carry it out. Don't hold on to it. Let go and let God. What is it? Right now, anyone under the sound of what is it the Lord wants you to do and you don't believe you can do it because you don't have what you feel are the resources to carry out the word of the Lord. I'm here to tell you, and this story in the Bible tell, reminds us that if you want to, if the, Lord, the word of the Lord has come to you to do something, know that he will provide everything that you need in order to accomplish what he has told you to do. She needed flour and water every day, flour and oil every day to carry out the word of the Lord and he provided. What is it that you uh, need God to provide you if you will just be obedient. Let go and let God. Thank you and you all be blessed.